We have uh, 42,000 uh, runners this year. It's, it's a new, new record. Very much looking forward to host over 2,500 uh, running tourists. That's a first as well. Kuala Lumpur Standard Chartered Marathon has always been a competitive event. Japanese and the Chinese market getting to know of, of KL Marathon and can come here. Also on a local level, we have our established uh, runners like five times champion Muhaizar, Nick Fakarudin. Unfortunately, Pooh Vazantan cannot uh, join, but they have some strong competition with uh, Hazik, Bimal and Jacob coming up. So I'm very excited to see that race, how it unfolds. And with the women, uh, it's Michelle Chua, uh, last year's winner, against uh, Amelia Musa, who was uh, runner-up last year. So it's going to be uh, exciting as well. Yesterday, Saturday is always uh, kind of special uh, for us. It's the kickoff for a long weekend for all of us. The 5 and the 10K also went uh, very well. And I hope today will be a similar affair. We welcome every participant. And uh, obviously, with a run like this in Kuala Lumpur, it will help you know, boost our economy here and we hope that they will enjoy the scenic view here in Kuala Lumpur as they run. It is the multi-award winning premier distance running event in Malaysia with participation numbers not matched by any other road race in the country. It's the Kuala Lumpur Standard Chartered Marathon, back for its 16th edition in 2024, and the start line reflects its success. This year, a new record, 42,000 participants, all gathered at Dutra Madek on race weekend, each and every one of them raring to go after months of training and preparation. As expected, the elites led off the field, but it was this pack of 15 who set the early pace. It wasn't long before they put some distance between themselves and the main body of runners, who were filling up the course once they all got underway. Just behind the elites, the leading top Malaysian runners, pacing themselves well early on, all showing great form and using one of the 18 hydration stops on the course. Five-time consecutive KLSCM champion Mohaiza Mohamed in the leading pack. I've been running more than 10 years. I started for my running when I was secondary school, 14 years old. I feel running is more suffering for me when I started. Hi, my name is Jacob. I'm 25 years old. I come from Koping Para. For my first marathon, I decided to go so marathon because I want to do my personal best in, the, in my first time for my food. Why I chose for Seoul Marathon is my friend called me to go with them. He said the Seoul Marathon is a fantastic course as a pretendant. Before the race, I have to try, run, feel the weather. I really like to run in the cool weather. During the race, the performance, I still can keep up. So I just keep it the speed and maintain my target. Every 5K, I check my timing cheat. Is it achieve my every single 5K timing? After the 35K, I feel my leg so heavy a bit. My pace start to drop a bit. I just keep maintain the pace. The last few hundred meters, Got many people cheating up along the way, so I be very excited. I just keep my pace to run until the finish line when I saw the timing board, 2 hours 31, 21 seconds. Wow, I so very impressive I can run for this timing for my first marathon. After so, I also increased my confidence to run full marathon in future. I didn't looking for any coach. Anything I learned from the social media, so I reference for their running program to create my own self. I will set the training program as a quarter for three months. So I will go back for my review, how far my training result, which part can I improve, then which part is my disadvantage. 
This year, I chose to join KLSCM for my first time running full marathon in Malaysia because KLSCM is a bigger event in Malaysia and certified by AIMS. And the Cash Fire also is a bigger in Malaysia event. Go for KLSCM, yeah, definitely is chasing for podiums. I think my main competitor runner is uh, Mohaiza, Pu, Ritma, Nick, and Hazik. These five of the runner, the best runner in Malaysia. Actually, I don't have uh, many strategy to run for this race. I just try my best and chasing the podium. I am training for a long time and consistent. I believe I can do my best on the day. If let's say I didn't get podium, I also very proud of myself because everything after that becomes your experience. I believe I can be one of the best runners in Malaysia. I ambition is one of the day I can represent Malaysia to international for the racing. First time running, I got pulled in by my friend. Oh God, what am I, what am I doing? Why am I running? This is exhausting. It was my first 10 km during the Global Running Day in Putrajaya. I didn't know what to expect. It was tough. I thought I couldn't finish the run. My name is Amalina and I am a teacher. I'd say I'm a very, very newbie runner and I'm just starting this journey. I've known Amalina now for five months. We had a run in Putrajaya, which was Global Runners Day. As I was running alongside her, all she did was went, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. But actual fact, she was struggling. She did it because she wanted to feel healthy. And I suppose because she found a group of people that was quite supportive. In terms of how much she has progressed from the first time I met her to who she is today, is absolutely great. She could run 5Ks non-stop. Because I join a community, they do running drills every week. And I love that we are accompanied by a coach. He's very technical. He will talk about things that I've never heard of, like energy reserve, passive running. We went for a fun run. And after she enjoyed that 5K run, she started asking around, hey guys, what is the next race that I should go in? That's when we said, if you ever want to experience a race, there's only one race that you should experience as a runner, and that's the KLSCM. That's when we knew she got the bug because she was already asking about races. So I'd say, yeah, I'm a radioactive runner who got bitten. <laughs> so I heard about KLSCM from my friends, and at that time, I was really eager to sign myself out. And luckily, I managed to get myself a spot in the 10km run. I don't really know what to expect. It will be emotional for her because of the work that she's put in. She may feel that it is the end of the road for her at some point. I'd say go big or go home. You know, if you're going for the first event, go for a big one. I'm nervous. Uh, it's scary and I don't want to end the race without finishing. As nervous as I am, I am truly excited. Somehow, if I close my eyes, I can feel the cheers. Yes, you can do it. Keep going. You're almost there. And these are the things that help me to feel less nervous. And I can't wait for 5th October to come. This is what I've been training for. Back with the main body of runners who by now had filled the streets of Kale as they do every year at the Kuala Lumpur Standard Chartered Marathon. Smiles all around and keeping their own pace. Some looking to better their personal best, some just here to enjoy the experience. For the front runners, the only goal was to beat the course record, a 2.11.05 set by Moses Kiptu Kurgat during the 2022 edition. The leading pack still keeping at a good pace, but at this stage, the pack was beginning to break up. David Kipkoria Rono now takes the lead, no signs of fatigue at all from him, but some of the others definitely starting to feel it as they fall away. But it was much tighter between the Malaysian runners, with absolutely nothing between them as they crossed the halfway mark at 21 kilometers. 
But soon it was Hazik Hamza just edging ahead of Mohaiza, both starting to pull away from the rest. It was also close in the elite women's category, with five ladies in it to win it at this point. Defending champion Beatrice Jalagat Cherop currently leading that pack. As for the Malaysian women's category, it was a superb start from 2022 champion Noor Amelia Musa, who put her clearly in the lead, running amongst a small pack of men. Just crossing the two hour mark now, a critical time of any marathon. If records are going to be broken, this is where they will fall. And these are the six men who will have the chance to do it. They put some distance between the rest now as Kiprop Tonid comes out as the new leader. He's done a wonderful job maintaining top race pace, just passing the 38 kilometer marker. So it's under five kilometers to go now. And you can see exactly how close it was, about 10 feet separating the front six, but a burst from Vincent Caprono takes him clear of the chasing pack. He's run a perfect negative split strategy, paced himself for the first 21K so that he could run a faster second half of the race. And now into the final stretch as he passes the famous Royal Salawa Club, just right beside the start finish line at Datron Medeca. And he would only get faster as well. Nobody to trouble him at all as he makes the finishing straight. And in the end, he crosses the line with a 2.18.16, with John Wangangi and Kiprop Tonui finishing second and third. The top four all hitting 2.18. The top Malaysian runner followed soon after. Mohaiza Mohammed on the final leg now, a full 20 seconds ahead of Hasik Hamza, who settled into second place. He rounds the turning point with the same consistent technique he's been showing since the start. under no pressure as he enters the last 500 meters to the finish. And he's done it. It's title number six for Mohaiza with a solid time of 2.41.17. It was an isolation finish for Mohaiza, but the fight for second went right down to the wire. Hazi Kamza and Yao Nijia matching each other stride for stride as they both get to the finish line. In the end, the final push by Hazik grabs him second spot with Yao third. Celebrations will have to come after, as right now they both fall to the ground to recover. An amazing battle from both of them. Next up at the finish line was the elite women. Kenyan Beatrice Jalagat Charop, once again the standout performer since the starter's gun, just passing the 40 kilometer marker, maintains that good solid running style. One final burst to the line, and she defends her title with a 233.45. It was also an isolation finish in the Malaysian women's category. Noor Amelia Binti Musa also looking very strong in the closing stages. And she's across the line with a 309-44 for her second KLSCM title. There have been incidences where runners have collapsed and some runners didn't make it. So if we have prepared, we can help prevent a worsening of the condition, speed up the necessary care for the patient with this team of uh, trained health professionals who are on the ground on that day. Hi, I'm Puyi. I'm a nurse at the endoscopy department. What I love about running is it gives me time and space to engage in prayer. The idea of the running medic, it started after I went to Nagoya Women's Marathon in the year 2017. I realised that they have medic runners that ran along with the other runners and they carry with them an AED. Um, why didn't KLSEM have this? And I messaged Reiner. I said, Reiner, do you have this in mind? And he said, Puyi, yes, I've had this brewing for quite some time. And now that you mention it, you go get the people. Me? Why me? I said. I started a WhatsApp group. One by one, we got those who can run. So from then, it, I managed to get him about 40 paramedics. Most of us with the ER emergency room background. And there will be one meetup on the Saturday before Stanchart on collecting the AED, getting it on, touching it, and what you need to do is get familiarised with your tool that is important, hands-on with it, so that will be it. And as for 
future runs? Yes, it is definitely for here to stay, the paramedic runners, because it is something we need. In such a mass event, it is not easy for the stationed paramedics at the specific areas to cover um, route. So with people on the ground actually running, runners who need first aid get the care as soon as possible. That is one step ahead. So I'm hopeful that the runners on that day, they will participate as well in helping us for example, not to crowd around us. But they can help by calling the number behind the beep, the emergency. As a first responder, we give what is important at that time. Anything personal on this is, that kept me thinking back when my own father, he collapsed at a dancing club on New Year's Eve. I was told none of the people there did CPR on him. Nobody knew how to. If someone would have done the CPR on him, maybe he has a chance of survival, who knows? I ran my first full KL SEM more than 10 years ago. And I like it very much because there's so much support and uh, cultural performances. I would definitely hope that I can synergize on the duty, being a medic on the run that day, and finishing the full marathon within the cutoff. Although I'm being assigned to five hours and 30 minutes finisher group, if I'm being delayed due to work and I can't finish in time, then so I will have to be mentally prepared not to be upset about that because I will have to prioritize my work on that day. Running actually started out for me as cardio and I happened to mention it to my orthopedic doctor and she said Standard Chartered is coming up and I'm registering. I'm like in awe and I said, yeah, well, Standard Chartered is just too much for me. And she says, no, there's like 10 km. And I said, I'm only doing five. And she says, five, now you can do 10. She registered me. So she said, now I've done that. You've got no choice but to train. So yeah, I kept my end of the bargain. <laughs> My name is Lorraine Geraldine Speckerman. I'm 56 years old. I'm a certified international personal trainer and also I'm a stick mobility specialist. On uh, 10 of October 2009, coming back from a friend's engagement luncheon, uh, our car met an accident and at the point of impact, uh, my leg snapped. To be frank, when they told me that I was going to lose a limb, I was in so much pain, I remember telling the doctor, whatever you needed to do, do it fast. Actually, the very next day when I looked down and I saw that the limb wasn't there, I accepted it. I, I'm not sure how do I move now. I think it was simultaneously I, I adapted, you know. I remember I would hold my <laughs> tears until everybody go to bed at night because I didn't want them to see that part of me. Being a mother of three, to me, they're everything. So if I gave up, then they would give up too in life. And I didn't want that for them. And through it all, my daughter, she stood tall. She was only 16 plus, going on 17, sitting for her SPM. And she stepped up to the plate and she started to direct me into fitness. She knew that I loved exercising before I got married, so she's the one who asked me to start exercising. Once I started doing that, I felt good about myself. I felt more confident, and I wanted others to feel the same way, that it was possible. I was in corporate, I wasn't happy, so I started to register myself into taking up a course to be as a certified personal trainer. Yeah, I got myself certified. I started thinking, why don't I pursue this? And finally, I started to apply to other places. And unfortunately, it is that mindset they have, you know, about age, your body abilities and all that. Uh, I saw on IG, Kevin was looking for a female trainer. And I've got nothing to lose. So I tried it out. Lorraine actually reached out to us and that was how I got to know her first. 
We wanted to work with a lot of relentless individuals who had this approach to um, life and challenges where they really didn't see those limits for themselves. They go out and they do this, all these amazing things and that in turn inspires other people to go and achieve these great things themselves. For years, I've always heard about the Standard Chartered Marathon and everybody speaks so highly of it. So for me, I looked at it also in that manner, you know, it was like up there. So when I was registered for the KLSEM, I was like, yeah, I got to do this. So I started running with my normal prosthetic, which is actually not designed for running. About a month plus back, I had voiced out to a mutual friend, Mat Sharif, that I would like to run with a blade. He happened to also be looking for a Malaysian counterpart and he gave me his blade. So we started training. I've been running like 10km and 5km intermittently. I would just like to be able to meet the cut-off time. I am really, really looking forward to it. And uh, we'll be trying to create awareness for others who are also disabled. And if I can just inspire one person, I feel I have done something. That is a blessing for me, that I served my purpose here. All in all, the Kuala Lumpur Standard Chartered Marathon delivered a very special day for all, as it has done for the last 15 years. It was smiles all around and fun for all who took part, whether young or old. The podium followed, Vincent Kiprono in his first ever marathon gets gold, joined by John Wangangi and Kiprop Tanui. Mohaiza Mohammed was all smiles as he received his gold medal and prize money, along with Hazi Kamza and Yao Nijiao. Beatrice Jaligat Cherok got her gold medal and her prize check. And finally, Noor Amelia Musa, who in the end finished a full seven minutes ahead of the rest of the field. While the medals were awarded, the runners kept flooding through the finish line, and for the most part, they were still looking in great spirits and smiling faces all around. But for a few, the emotions overwhelmed them. Memories they will never forget created once more at KLSCM. For me, um, it's the first time I ran for a reason. Um, myself and my colleague uh, Bilal, we raised in combination about 170,000 ringgit. I got caught up in the whole excitement of the event and I went up very quickly. The last three kilometers was really uh, uh, more mental than physical. So for me, that was really a, uh, a key life story and life learning. And of course this year, 42,000 participants. That's the record in 16 years. Amazing. Um, and international. Uh, this year, I think we've got a pretty significant representation from the ASEAN countries, Singapore, Indonesia. And if you look behind me, uh, we've ended, but still there's a lot of people around on a Sunday afternoon. And uh, what, a, what a fantastic atmosphere. Sure, um, so the first two and a half K were awesome. And then unfortunately I had a calf injury, so I had to jalan jalan the rest. Um, and I think the big thing for this year was also all our staff taking part, bringing in staff from Thailand, from Indonesia. It's really good and it's kind of that, you know, love life again, love life for ethos and one team. It's a fantastic event and we're very proud to be part of it. The timing is no, I wonder, 3 hours, 11 minutes and 49 seconds. I run comfortable in front to half a marathon. After 22K, my legs start feel like very heavy. I feel I want to cramp, so I need to stop every water station, pulling down my whole body. I still really cramp. I need to stop and walk. My mind, I want to DNF actually. I just stop a while. I just continue to run. I need to training hard for my next year at full marathon. Definitely, I will come back on next year to join Full Marathon again. First experience, that was more than I imagined. And there were so many moments while running, I felt that fear of not achieving this medal was so strong. But runners that were behind me said, you know, a little bit more. That helped me so much because they don't know how much I was struggling at that time. Wanting to give up. But these people are the ones that kept cheered me on, helped me reach that finishing line. And I'm so glad that I managed to end within my time. It was a very emotional moment for me, honestly. 
and the moment I got the medal, I said, this is what I trained for, and I did it, yay! <laughs> I am absolutely glad that we were around. Many of them were surprised that we were on the run with them. Uh, just the normal runners in distress, where I have to uh, ask if they are okay, if they need transport back, or if they need any further treatment. Other than that, it was okay. Um, this morning's goal was to finish 5.30, so there was no way I could catch the 5.30 anymore. It was the seven-hour finisher uh, pacer behind me. If I can finish, I will try to finish. So I finished 6.30, that is good enough. I survived. It seemed like it was never ending, but I keep telling myself that I'm on the way home. I'm on the way home. Um, I had three bouts of changing the prosthetic because the liner was giving me a problem. When I crossed the line, it was like, yeah, I made it. It was so nice to see her at the finish line. She was the one who pushed me back into running. She made it. And this is my first 10km and it's a standard chartered. It's a big thing for me. So when my daughter was there, I, I'm, I'm so grateful that she could make it this time. Thanks to the sponsors, the partners, DBKL, Ministry of Youth and Sports, very strong supporter. And to me, the biggest surprise was uh, the Full Marathon Open uh, winner. The young chap, he never left uh, his country, Kenya, came here the first time to Asia and wins in 218. And also a little bit surprised about Muhaizar, pocket his uh, sixth title. So congratulations to him, as well as Amelia with her second title. I'm just happy uh, the most runners we ever had, the most finishers we ever had, uh, the dropout very low. Yeah, we managed to pull those two days off. Awesome. A day to remember, no doubt, but that's what the KLSCM is all about. And as is tradition, the organizers welcome the final runner across the finish line to complete a great day of racing. See you again next year. Run like the river. Run.